Welcome to the very first episode of my graphic content show. Uh, I'm your host, your friendly neighborhood BS artist, Mikhail Molipola. Uh, I thought I'd kick things off for the show by doing a QA. and a get, you know, get to know me a little bit. Uh, so on my Facebook page, um, I sent out suggestions for questions for me to answer. And they were very varied um, and from all over the world, which is kind of cool. Uh, I wasn't sure if anyone was going to actually ask me any questions. Um, so yeah, so I'll... I guess I'll just get right into it um, and start answering these questions. Hopefully you get some insight into who I am, my opinions, and yeah, I feel sorry for you guys. You don't want to know what goes inside my head. But anyway, um, yeah, let's let's get rolling. So the first question um, from T, T. Louis, um, pretty much asks what are my thoughts on Tekken 7, Fated Retri Retribution. Um, I like it. Um, I've played a bit of Tekken 7 um, in town, in Auckland City. Um, I'm still getting used to it. Um, the pace is a little different. It feels like I'm playing underwater, but I like what I've seen from Fade the Retribution. I'm looking forward to seeing Akuma actually joining in canon uh, the Tekken video games. Um, and from the looks of uh, Akuma's uh, moveset, he, he looks and feels like normal Akuma. So anyone that's into Street Fighter and not exactly Tekken, can pick up Akuma and uh, and have a jam really, um, but they still get their ass kicked by my king. So um, yeah, no, I like the look of Tekken Seven Fade the Retribution. Um, next question, uh, Ashish, a good uh, school friend of mine uh, over in Sydney. I think you're in Sydney, aren't you, Ashish? Uh, he's got a couple of questions and um, they're pretty heavy. Um, so, <laughs> so first question he asked is. Um, Given the vibrant wrestling scene and the size of our New Zealand boys, what is missing to make them get bigger honours on the wrestling stage, on the international stage? And what's really missing for our New Zealand uh, wrestlers, uh, you know, men and women, um, is opportunity, really. Um, New Zealand is, is far too small uh, to really be noticed internationally. and. Um, and you really have to go overseas to really make a name for yourself and pretty much show people what you're capable of. And I must say, you know, uh, New Zealand wrestling, you know, some of our, our wrestlers are, you know, world class level, um, you know, um, and what they have to do is just chase those opportunities, um, go overseas. And one of my good friends, um, Fale Tox, um, happens to be doing it big. Um, he's now he's under, he's known as the underboss, bad luck Fale in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he's just a dude from big Tongan fella from Mangere, you know, and uh, and he's living the dream. He's you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling is the second largest um, wrestling promotion in the world, second only to the WWE, and he is one of the top guys. Um, and you know all he did was you know chase the dream. You know, he played rugby in Japan, and when that career kind of fell through, he followed pro wrestling. Um, and so, um, I'm quite honoured to call him a friend. Um, but the coolest thing is that he's inspiring um, not only New Zealand wrestlers but also Polynesian kids, you know, to chase your dreams and, and go out there and, and do it and, and do it on the on the world stage like he does. Um, you know, month to month out, he's flying. He's constantly flying in and out of New Zealand and Japan um, so yeah so I always catch up with him most of the times when he's in New Zealand hanging out just chatting but you know still a real humble fella uh, despite all his successes um, so yeah only thing that's really holding people back is opportunity but the thing is opportunities don't come to you you need to go to them and so yeah um, a whole bunch of people um, that I've worked with in the past have finally made the, the step to go overseas, go to England, Japan, Mexico, um, you know, um, and stuff. So yeah, USA. Um, so now they're actually chasing those opportunities. You've got to make those opportunities happen. And that's what is really holding people back from breaking onto the, you know, breaking out into the world stage is opportunity, you know, just like comics. Um, Ashish's says other question, um, art related this time, uh, would you use your skills to push a political agenda, you know, kind of like political cartooning? It's never really been my thing. Um, I'm no Chris Lane. Um, he does, you know, he's a good friend of mine too, which is cool, uh, but he does a lot of the listener cartoons. Um, it's not like, it's not like I've been apathetic towards politics, it's just never been my thing. 
to draw political cartoons. Um, you know, I think if I really feel deep down about something, really, um, I will draw about it. Um, but politics, um, I just like I do have views on politics, but um, I've never felt strongly enough to kind of turn those views into an actual cartoon. Um, so yeah, um, Abraham um, asks, uh, he just wanted to know what kind of supplies, you know, pens, markers, that I use for my artwork, and the um, cool thing is, I use Copics. This is actually, this is actually uh, my pencil case, uh, using all these Copic markers, um, which I get from Takapuna Art Supply. Uh, supplies are in Takapuna, obviously. Um, Jim and Sandy, who are in Takapuna Art Supplies, are good friends of mine, uh, and they've been really supportive of my artwork. But yeah, you, know, you can pick up Copic markers. Um, I also use you know, a clutch pencil, um, microns, but my my tool, my weapon of choice is this the Pentel pocket brush. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like it's expensive stuff, um, but again, as an artist, as a professional working artist, you need to kind of invest in the tools. You know, I've also got pit pens. Um, as well as a couple of Copic um, pens as well, but when it comes to drawing, it, this is this is the lifeblood of my sketches, the pencil pocket brush. And the cool thing about Copics as well is that they're refillable. And so, let me just refills. So when uh, I start running out uh, or the pen starts drying up, I just fill it up. Um, the only problem with Copics is they're not light fast, and so um, so over time they'll um, they'll fade uh, so as long as you keep it out of the sun and, uh, and keep it protected you should be fine um, so yeah hopefully that answers your questions Abraham um, Mike T another friend from high school um, asks how does one manage to live a life as full as mine yet still find time to maintain a, a, such a magnificent beard well as you can see I'm in shape for a bit um, so it's not as magnificent as it usually is um, pretty much maintaining a magnificent beard is just growing one really uh, I've been growing one since high school as you know and I got in trouble for it so I had to keep shaving it and keep shaving it meant that it grows faster um, but yeah I think the secret of my magnificent beard is the fact that my hair transferred from the top of my head to the bottom of my face um, so yeah um, yeah I, I got no other um, got, got no other tips for you, for you uh, Mike um, other than that, really, um, Leaf, my good friend Leaf, uh, over in Tasmania, uh, I think you're in Tasmania, right? Uh, he says, how are you? Because I'm fine, thank you. Um, has your chicken gotten that bad that you need a glove? Ah, my smudge guard. Um, that little glove that I have, um, that kind of uh, covers the two fingers and this part of my hand, it's called a smudge guard. And I use the smudge guard, um, so I don't smudge my artwork or um, dirty my my screen when I'm using the Cintiq. As for my Tekken, um, it hasn't gone that bad because uh, it's, I'm just semi retired. But uh, we have a Tekken 6 machine here at Arkham City Comics. Um, and at the moment, over three years, I've got 170 plus wins and nine losses. Uh, so my Tekken is still not that bad. Um, you know, um, but Tekken 7, though. I'm average. Um, still need to get used to the pacing of that. Um, so yeah, thanks, Leaf. Um, ah, Steve. Steve Risk. Uh, he's a he's the kind of creator owner of uh, SIG Universe Games, and they they uh, he's based in New York, um, and they've got this cool wrestling card game called Super Show, um, and um, and he's got a question pretty much uh, referring to Super Show. So his question says, uh, rumor has it Liger is invading the legendary fighting federation. What can the fans expect? Well, I feel a little underqualified to answer that question. So I'll throw it over to Liger um, and he'll, he'll kind of, yeah, answer the question for him. Um, if you don't know, legendary fighting federation is the promotion that is in the super show card game. And uh, and Liger is actually going to get some uh, some cards 
added to the thing, courtesy of my artwork. So, uh, yeah, so to answer that question, what can fans expect from Liger and the legendary fighting federation is utter devastation. Once my cards are in play, there's no hope for any opponent. Cool. And so, uh, Paul, um, and I recognize Paul from IPW shows, um, and he says, love your artwork. Yeah, thank you. Um, what are your future plans and projects? Um, I've got a few things on my plate at the moment. Um, now near the IPW, Impact Pro Wrestling uh, events and stuff. Um, coming up this year I've also got um, Armageddon um, which is the New Zealand Comic Convention here uh, so Monaco uh, which is my my hometown South Auckland uh, and Christchurch uh, I'll be heading down to Christchurch for the first time since um, since the quake um, so I'm looking forward to that and uh, and the cool thing is I get to work with uh, Haku King Haku you know Ming Tonga for feeder um, you know legendary Tongan pro wrestler and pretty much the baddest man on the planet when it comes to pro wrestling um, so that's coming up you know in the near future uh, like very much like in the next month um, and then I've got a trip to the States where I'll be at WonderCon um, hanging out with Mike, Michael Kingston the writer of Headlocked um, we'll be at the Headlock booth and we'll also have a Headlocked panel uh, on the Saturday night which will be kind of cool um, getting to talk uh, rubbish about wrestling and comics um, what else is there on my plate? Uh, I'm also doing artwork for a Tongan Heroes book, very similar to the Samoan Heroes book, um, and some school journal stuff. Will be sh I think. Yeah, there's just so much on my plate. Uh, I may look at uh, New York Comic Con uh, in October, depending on how my funds are and and how um, the first trip to the states goes. Um, but yeah, that's kind of stuff I can think of. Um, but being an artist and stuff, um, yeah, there's always projects that would jump on, jump, uh, jump at me, last minute projects, um, you know, uh, just little things here and there, uh, to tide me over, can't tell, can't say what, um, at the moment, that's why they fall into my lap, but, um, at the moment, it's more headlocked, um, uh, we got some, oh, actually, speaking of more headlocked, um, there's some cool stuff in the works for headlocked. And, um, and if you're unaware of Headlocked, Headlocked is a graphic novel that I draw and Michael Kingston uh, writes, but also the covers are by Jerry the King Lawler. If you're a big fan of wrestling, you'll know who that is. He's a WWE Hall of Famer and also a ring, uh, you know, ringside commentary uh, for SmackDown, I think now. Um, so yeah, uh, William. William from Wanganui. Um, he asks, uh, how does your Samoan heritage inform your approach to artistic style and creative philosophy? If at all. Um, and William uh, is, is a good kid. He's a half Samoan comic artist out, out of Mongolia. Um, and so, yeah, so I appreciate your question, William. Um, my Samoan heritage, it's, it's interesting because I've always thought of my Samoan heritage or even just Polynesian heritage in general, pardon me, um, has this uh, inherent ability. Um, like any Polynesian has this inherent ability to tell a story. Um, our people are very much you know, storytellers, you know, through the ages has been, you know, oral histories and, um, and whatnot. And, um, and now in this kind of modern age, um, you know, we have playwrights and like actors, um, and even like sports people, you know, telling their stories, uh, through their chosen paths. And I think what makes us so successful in those, in those fields, again, is that latent ability to tell a story. And so I feel um, that kind of allows me to really um, tell a story through the comics medium. Um, so it's not necessarily like um, my family lineage and stuff, but more just our people, just being you know, natural storytellers uh, really helps um, kind of inform um, what I do as a comic book artist um, as, as in, in terms of like creative philosophies and stuff you know, um, same thing but like also another thing that really helps inform when I'm drawing stuff um, 
is the community I grew up in. Growing up in South Auckland, um, it was a very multicultural society. Um, you know, people from all walks of life, all different ethnicities, um, were just down the street from me. And so whenever I draw uh, crowd scenes and I'm drawing people in the crowd or just people in general, um, I like to mix it up because you know, I like to, not everyone is white, you know, there's an Asian, there's a, you know, an Islander, a black guy, you know, all that kind of thing, you know, um, I like to kind of bring that into, into my artwork because that's the society, that's the world I grew up in and that should be the world that we all grow up in, you know, um, diverse um, backgrounds, you know, diverse community. Um, and that's what South Auckland provided for me, and so that's why I try and also bring into my artwork as well. Uh, Stephen, Stephen Escudero uh, from Miami, and Stephen has a has a cool uh, podcast, uh, Vundercast, I think it is, uh, Vundercast. Um, but he's also a, a big supporter of Headlocked, um, and so he just asks, um, "Who taught me to wrestle?" Um, and um, I don't have like big stars. You know, I'm from New Zealand, so we didn't have like huge big stars really training us. But um, there's three guys that I can attribute my my wrestling career to who taught me. Um, there's a guy named Chuck, also known as the Machine, um, Alfred Valentine, and Kingy. Um, those three guys really um, put me through my paces and taught me not only how to wrestle but how to work. Um, you know, the, the psychology and that's what I love about wrestling as well storytelling like I mentioned in um, the previous um, question um, like there's this you know, latent ability to tell a story well as a Polynesian and so um, wrestling for me is just another form of telling a story another um, outlet for me uh, to share my stories with the crowd um, and yeah, and Kingy, uh, Kingy a few years ago was uh, traveling around the States and uh, actually worked a couple of matches for OVW. Um, and so when he came back, he brought some of that knowledge that he learned on his uh, on his law tour um, around America. And that, um, so yeah, um, so those are the guys that taught me how to wrestle. Um, he also asks, "What's my favorite monster?" Wow, man, I love monsters. I love drawing monsters, but I would have to say. The Norris monster from John Carpenter's The Thing. The Thing is my favorite, all-time favorite horror film. And I just love the designs and the creepiness and the grotesqueness, uh, grotesqueness of um, the creatures they created for John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, so yeah, Norris monster. Uh, I think second, uh, a close second would be the Brundle fly uh, from David Cronenberg's The Fly, uh, Jeff Goldblum. Um, but yeah, nah, Norris monster, you know, that was cool, and the head pops off, and the uh, legs come out, and the eyes come out, and all that stuff, yeah, uh, love the thing. Um, so yeah, thanks for that, Stephen. Uh, officer Brian, <laughs> good old Brian, uh, Officer Brian um, is, a, is a police officer in New Zealand, uh, police force, and also a TV star uh, with uh, the Brian and Bobby show, um, and he's a big comic book fan, so he asks, um, Who's the best relaunched character in 2015? Um, hmm, relaunched character. I can't really, can't really think of anyone that's like the best relaunched character. In, best, in terms of the best new character, uh, I would go with Spider Gwen. Um, I love Spider Gwen. I love the artwork. I love the story and stuff. It's so much fun. Um, it's pretty hip and pretty cool. Um, to you. Can't really think of anyone that's a relaunched character in 2015. Um, also, he asks uh, if all the superheroes in the DC and Marvel universe go into a warehouse for Battle Royale, which one wins and why? Um, you can't go past Wolverine. Um, that guy, you yeah, know, is the best that what he, no, is the best in the world at what he does. And what he does ain't pretty. Um, he has no qualms with stabbing people, killing people, um, and so yeah, and with his, you know, uh, regenerating uh, healing factor, um, you can, there's no limits as to how long he can go, he can just pretty much go until everyone's just tired out and then stabby stab, stab, really, 
so yeah, I'd go for free. Um, Adam, Adam asks a few questions, um, and he asks, uh, who is the artist who I think has most influenced my style? Growing up as a kid, you know, Jim Lee. Jim Lee was the man, you know, the marks of history in Jim Lee, loved the X-Men stuff as a kid, so obviously you know, I loved that look, you know, the hyper-realistic, muscular, cross-hatchy guys. Um, as I got older, I kind of started branching out a bit, like seeing, you know, exp you know, being exposed to different art forms, you kind of grab bits and pieces uh, and you kind of filter it through your own artwork. Um, but guys I love, like, um, seeing now, um, like Sanford Green, um, the guy who I'm lucky enough uh, to hang out with every now and then when I'm in the States. Um, yeah, Robbie Rodriguez, I love the kinetic style of his stuff. Um, you know, Sean Murphy, man, that guy's a monster. Um, but yeah, there's so many artists I love, and it's not necessarily like I, I copy or would try and emulate, but like it just inspire um, my work. Um, Adam also asks, favorite comic based movie? Um, oh, I like Spider Man 2. I really like Spider Man 2. Guardians of the Galaxy I like. Kingsman. Kingsman was pretty pretty ace. Oh, so hard. So hard to really whittle, whittle it down to one. So yeah. Um, I, oh, I think I might end up going with Kingsman. Actually. Kingsman I, I, I was just so absurd and, and fun really. Um, it might get I might get knocked off its throne by Deadpool this weekend, so um, we'll see how that goes. Um, ah, Adam asks, favorite Rob Liefeld cover? Here's the thing, Adam. I was actually going to legit answer this question and um, and actually show you my favorite Rob Liefeld cover. But after reading his comments on uh, on Deadpool and Fabian uh, Cieza, I think that's his, is that how you pronounce it. Um, Fuck that guy. Fuck Rob Liefeld. So I'm not even going to answer that question because then that means that he actually exists in this world. So fuck that guy. Um, Powerpuff Girls or My Little Ponies? Uh, that's what I had the mask. And Powerpuff Girls. Hands down, Powerpuff Girls. You know? um, fighting crime. Trying to save the world Here they come just in time The Power Puff Girls So yeah, Power Puff Girls My little painting is no show um, So yeah Dan Mac um, Asked via Twitter uh, Which WWE Diva would you like to have a bath with? Um, not a big fan of WWE Divas um, But if anyone I have a bath with well, I guess Paige. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Um, Voorhees asks uh, if you could write your own comic book about anything at all, what would it be? Um, well, I did write a comic book. Um, I still had to draw it, but it's a zombie one. Uh, and I know Voorhees, how you like zombies. So uh, once I finish that, then you can take a look at it and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, Sasaya uh, asks, can you make a superhero stronger than Superman? Yes, yes I can. The joy of um, of being a creative um, is that you can create whatever, whatever you like. Um, you can make someone as strong or as weak as you like. So yes, I can technically make a superhero stronger than Superman. Uh, second part of this question is, if so, can you name him after me? No. Um, Jordan uh, asks, if you had the chance to collaborate with any comic book artist or author, uh, who would you work with and why? Um, hmm, that's... Yeah, it's weird because I'm an artist, so I can't exactly go, oh, I want to work with Jim Lee, because then Jim Lee would do that work, and then I won't do that work, so I'm not necessarily working with them. Um, but authors, writers, um, you know, I can definitely work with, and one of my favorite writers at the moment is Jason Aaron. Uh, he's doing great stuff on Thor, and Southern Bastards, uh, Men of Wrath. I really enjoyed uh, the Star Wars stuff. 
he's, he's killing it, um, Secret Wars and stuff, so yeah, um, yeah, no, Jason Aaron, um, would be the guy I'd love to collaborate with on something, um, so yeah, call me Jason, um, yeah, and the final set of, oh, no, a few more questions, sorry, uh, taking quite a long time, um, uh, but this one's special because it's from Kathy, Kathy's in Fiji, and she's an inspiring comic book artist, um, so I thought I'd try and answer her questions as best I can. Um, so yeah, she, she, her first question, uh, what does it like to own a comic book store? The thing is I don't own the comic book store, I don't own Arkham City Comics, uh, my friend Jeremy does. Um, I actually just work here, um, but I help him run it and you know, um, so I have a, I feel like it's kind of my store as well, but I don't really have anything tied into it. Um, I just try and make the store as, as fun and as cool as possible really. Uh, I'm the ideas guy. Um, Jeremy's the main business owner, but it's fun, you know. I get to draw comics while reading comics and selling comics, and surrounded by the stuff I love, you know, like all this stuff in the background. Um, so yeah, no, working in a comic book store, you know, it's a pretty cool dream, um, and I get to live like three of my dreams uh, in one lifetime. So that's that's pretty amazing. Uh, number two, her second question: What inspired you and keeps you going to make comics art? Um, just knowing that I'm doing it, um, just knowing that I'm living the dream, um, kind of pushes you forward, uh, to continue living that dream. Um, you know, there's still so much I need, I want to accomplish and I need to accomplish, but, um, the fact that I'm doing it, um, is enough of a driving force, um, for me. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm very fortunate. Um, to be doing what I'm doing and to kind of say that I am a professional comic book artist which is weird because I don't see myself as professional but um, people pay me and I make an alright living off it so I guess I am professional in the you know, literal sense of the word um, question 3 from Kathy uh, do you have any advice for artists or student artists who want to become comic artists my advice do the work um there's no point sitting around thinking about it. Uh, the best thing you can do is do it. Um, even just trying um, to make a comic, uh, you learn so much. Um, you learn so much from the mistakes you made. And just by in the act of doing it, or even trying to do it, um, you're already ahead of the people who are just sitting at home thinking about it. So just work on work on it. You know, just keep drawing, keep working hard. Just do it. Really, um, I. I have uh, a little mantra um, that I live by um, when it comes to drawing comics and, and, and whatnot in my artwork. Um, yeah, I live by two things. One, do the work. Two, don't be a dick. And that has gotten me some great uh, connections. Do the work and don't be a dick. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my advice um, for any aspiring artists. But other than that, just do it. Um, there's nothing better than actually trying. Um, so yeah, uh, question for her uh, for her is, uh, what is your opinion on art schools? Um, art schools, I've never been a huge fan of. Um, because I wanted to draw comics, none of the art schools were really drawing, uh, or drawing, teaching what I wanted to learn. And, um, and so I kind of had to learn um, through you know, my own means in my own esteem. Um, and some of the art schools I've seen nowadays, um, a lot of them are really focused on the idea, you know, the philosophy behind the artwork rather than the actual execution of that idea. And so a lot of people who can't actually draw or paint or sculpt or whatnot are getting degrees based on the ideas rather than the actual execution. And, um, and I feel um, that Art isn't actually being taught at art schools. Um, so yes, I'm I'm not a huge fan. Uh, there, you know, those are traditional art schools. You now there are non-traditional art schools like uh, at the animation college, um, you know, media design school and stuff. And they're teaching animation and actual functional art, you know, art skills. Um, you know, you just kind of find what you're looking for, um, what suits you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my opinion on art schools. Uh, question five. Uh, what is my favorite art tool, like a pencil or a tablet brand? Um, as you saw earlier, 
um, Pentile Pocket Brush, that's my weapon of choice uh, when it comes to sketches as well as Copic markers. Um, but for my work, um, I actually work on a Wacom Cintiq Companion. And so I do all my, my uh, artwork, my commercial artwork uh, and comics digitally. Um, makes it a lot easier and, uh, and I can email pages and artwork straight away rather than having to look for a scanner and, and fix it through there. And um, you know, last of Kathy's questions, um, you know, I felt I needed to answer all of the questions because she's an aspiring artist from Fiji, the islands like me. Uh, or well, not from the islands, but you know, like an islander, a Polynesian, and uh, and I thought answering all the questions will give her a little bit of an idea of what it's like um, to be a Polynesian artist, a professional artist. Um, so she asks, um, you know, she she really wants to apply to Animation College uh, New Zealand next year, but she's afraid she's not good enough. Um, do I have any advice? Um, because yeah, apparently in Fiji there aren't any um, art schools really teaching that stuff. Um, when it comes to Animation College, um, I can't recommend Animation College New Zealand hi highly enough. Um, I have very good friends um, who are tutors there and really care about the students um, and really pushing the students um, to be better artists. Yeah, just, just apply, you know, even if you feel you're not good enough. Um, as I said, all you have to, all you can do is try, and then you don't know. You may surprise yourself. I surprise myself all the time by trying, and and succeeding, because uh, I'm always seeing myself up for failure. Um, but yeah, go ahead. You know, just apply, apply for animation college. As I said, I can't recommend animation college um, highly enough. Uh, good friends and a good school. Um, See so yeah. ya. Um, cool and yeah. Sorry, it's taken like half an hour. Um, but the final question uh, goes to Gus. Um, he asks, why do men have nipples? Well, Gus, um, when we start out as an embryo, um, we, we're gender fluid, um, but mainly we're female. Everyone is female when we start off in the embryo. Um, and if there's no Y chromosome, um, then... Um, then you continue to grow as a female. Um, but if there is a Y chromosome uh, in your male, um, the testosterone uh, kind of uh, kicks in. And so what were um, to be breasts kind of turn to just nipples. Um, very much like um, you know, the, the labia and stuff you know, form into the penis and scrotum. Um, so yeah. Um, so that's kind of why men have nipples because we all start off as female um, until the you know, um, unless you're a male and you have the Y chromosome, um, the testosterone uh, kind of shrunk out our boobies really and left us with nipples. Um, so yeah, um, thank you very much for your patience. Um, I know there was a lot of questions. Maybe I should shorten it, uh, make it like one question per person. Um, but hopefully I tried to answer every question um, because I felt like um, I needed to. Um, but yeah, I guess hopefully you get to you got to know me a bit. Um, I will hold another one of these again. I feel like there's still so much that I need to talk about because I like to talk a lot. That's what my girlfriend says anyway. Um, and so yeah, so thank you for your time. Um, if you have any questions. Uh, fire them through to me for any future um, editions of this Q&A um, don't forget to like my Facebook page and all that stuff you know check out my website all that stuff will be down there I'll post the editor whatever um, maybe I'm not and then I just make myself look like a dick just pointing at my penis um, but yeah all this stuff will be in the descriptions you know make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel that's what people say right on YouTube subscribe to my channel um, but yeah, that's Graphic Content Episode 1. Um, again, thank you, and I'll see you guys later.